Maybe you are to the point in your search for a table saw where you are looking at the Bosch GTS 1031 and the Rigid R4516. If so, then I think you'll find this video very helpful as I do an in-depth feature-by-feature -feature comparison of these two very popular table saws. Let's take a look at the specifications for the R4516. It is a 10-inch, 15-amp table saw. At zero bevel, it'll cut three and a quarter inches. I couldn't find the specification for the 45-degree bevel. The RPMs are about 5,000. This weighs in at a hefty 54 and a half pounds. Uh, that's about uh, 10 pounds heavier than the DeWalt 745 and about 5 pounds lighter than the Bosch GTS 1031. The rip left on this is 7 inches. The rip right specification says 24, but when I measured it, and we'll look at it in a little bit, it's 24 and a quarter is what I could get out of it, just shy of 24 and a quarter. It will take a dado stack with an optional insert. It doesn't come with a dado insert. Uh, the warranty in the manual says three years. Uh, on the box it says lifetime, so you'll need to do some research into that. It does not come with a stand. The table on this is 19 by 28. Uh, it does have good dust collection, which I'm going to show you a little bit in just a little bit. And uh, online at the time of this recording, it was $249. Let's look at the specifications for the Bosch. This is a 10 inch 15 amp saw. At zero degree bevel it'll cut through about 3.5 inches of lumber. At 45 degrees it'll cut through 2.5 inches. The RPMs are 5,000. This weighs in at a hefty 60 pounds. So if you gotta go up some stairs with this or you got to carry it some distance, that's a consideration. The rip left is 8.5 inches, the rip right is 18 inches, and when I get to the section of the video on the fence, I'll show you how I sneak about another half inch out of that. It will take a dado stack with the optional table insert. Uh, it does not come with a stand. It does have dust collection. Table size is 23 by 20 inches. Height is right at about 30 inches without any of the attachments. Um, warranty is one year, and at the time of this video, this saw was $379 before tax and before any discounts. Let's take a look at the accessories. Um, first of all, it does come with a standard fence and uh, the typical push stick that you'll find with uh, most of the table saws does come with wrenches in the back and an allen wrench there anti-kickback paws and then it does have a blade guard and of course it does come with a rigid blade I must say on this blade guard it was one of the easier ones to install and then it does come with a, a really nice uh, miter gauge which I'm going to talk more about in just a moment If you've seen any of my other table saw reviews, you know one of the biggest criticisms I have, even in the table saws of the, that are at the five or $600 level, is they have these very, I'm going to use the term cheap, very, very cheap miter gauges, very poor incrementation on them, very difficult to view, very short, and really don't stay in place well. You know, this must cost them uh, probably two or three bucks to produce for the other other table saws. However, for the rigid, they have a much nicer um, miter gauge. Now, is this a $120 to $200 miter gauge? I don't think so, but I think you can get pretty accurate with this. So if you compare the increments on here, look at the difference in how fine the increments are on this one compared to the cheaper one, which is typical of even the more expensive saws. Also, what they have on this is they have stops that you can use and you can set these stops take your measuring devices measure this to make sure this is square or 45 or whatever degree that you want set these stops and then you use this little guy right here to make sure you're at the right stop so you can set this up for stops if you move especially if you're moving back and forth between different angle cuts of course this is threaded so you can put it in a, in a handle or a clamp if you want to put a clamp in here. You have two slots that if you want to add a piece of wood or metal or some other device to help increase the width of your miter gauge, that's fine. 
But one of the things I also like is the disc or donut that's on here because what that does is that keeps this stable. So I took a measuring stick and said, okay, how far back can I come safely with this and still be able to do a cross cut? I measured this out from the blade to about here 10 inches before it starts to get a little bit too wobbly. So this is going to allow you, this, this, this kind of extends the width of your table, okay? So instead of just having this amount of distance, you've got a full 10 inches. If you want to take a few chances, you might be able to get it out to 11 inches. Also, I found, again, compared to all the other modern gauges that I've uh, reviewed, this one has very, very little wobble. So as you push your workpiece through the blade, you know it's going to stay at the angle that you set it to. So again, this to me is a big differentiation on this saw. Let's take a look at the accessories that come with the Bosch. Of course, it comes with a fence. Does come with a push stick, anti-kickback paws. Does have the blade guard and a Bosch 10-inch general purpose blade. It also comes with your wrenches to change out the blade. And it does come with a miter gauge. Not much difference between this miter gauge and the miter gauge. It comes with a Harbor Freight $139 saw. But those are the accessories that come with the Bosch. I've read some reviews of some table saws by owners that say the tables are not square. So I think from now on in all my reviews I'm going to try to remember to do a check with my measuring device and I cannot find anything off no matter where I set this. This table is basically square or flat with itself. So there's no deviation whether I go 45 either way or I go front to back. Uh, even if I go this way, there doesn't appear to be any warping or um, distortion in this aluminum tabletop. The table on the Bosch appears to be level or square, both left to right and uh, front to back. And any way that I measured it with my little square here, it came out perfect. Even when I brought the extension out, it still stayed level with the rest. And uh, that's probably because all this additional tubing or framing prevents the tabletop from being distorted in any way. So this is a very square tabletop. Another thing I wanted to check on this saw, and I'm going to start going on all the other saws that I review, is checking the zero bevel. So I'm getting in as about as close as I can. You can still see it. This is a little bit off. So you can see that it's just a tad off at zero bevel, which indicates to me that there has to be some kind of adjusting unless that really doesn't make a difference to the type of uh, woodworking or cutting that you're doing. Just a hair of a gap in there. So let me turn this over. We'll take a look and see if there's any kind of adjustment for the zero bevel on this uh, rigid table saw. The blade alignment at 90 degrees from the factory for the Bosch is pretty good. You can see just a little bit of daylight there, a little bit more at the top, just a fraction off. And I found it to be about the same at uh, 45 degrees for this table saw. Let's take a peek under the hood from the uh, top of the saw. So as you can see here, there's enough threading so that you could apply a dado stack to that arbor. And then back here is the riving knife. And on several other saws I've seen the same thing. It's a, a very high visibility lever to adjust and or to remove your riving knife. So it's very convenient. There's enough space in here. There's enough gap in between the blade and the side that you can get your hands down there fairly easily. One thing I have noticed on this one, you do have a dust control, which I'm going to show you more about in a little bit. But the dust control ends about uh, three inches before the tabletop. So I'm going to show that to you from another angle, but it makes me wonder how good the dust control is on this with this kind of uh, gap in between the tabletop and the dust control cowling. Before we turn the Bosch over and take a look uh, from the underside, let's look down inside from the top. You'll notice for the table insert there's set screws, two in the front and two in the back. 
that allow you to change the height of the table insert. And I think you can see the arbor there, it's large enough to accommodate a dado stack, but again, you're going to need another table insert, which is optional with the saw, it doesn't come with it automatically. There's your riving knife and the mechanism to control the height and remove it. And then you can see here on the back, there's some adjustments for the riving knife. So make sure you take a look at your manual to see how to adjust this for the different blade sizes, uh, blade thicknesses that you may use. There's also a dust control, it's all black plastic, it's hard to see from this angle. Uh, but I'm going to flip this over here in just a moment and show you this all from the bottom. So that's down inside the Bosch from the top. Let's take a closer look at the exterior on the rigid. Uh, for the table insert it's a very simple pop in and pop out with these little snaps. This lever controls the table extension. I'm going to show you more about that in a few minutes. You do have handles on the left and on the right hand side. These are relatively comfortable and there's enough room on this side if you have a thick pair of gloves you shouldn't have any difficulty getting your hand in there. Down here is onboard storage for your push stick and then of course your miter gauge. I'm not able to find any onboard storage for the blade guard or for the anti-kickback paws or for the allen wrench. Um, you know, I think they may have enough space underneath that they could probably put some kind of uh, uh, snap-in situation there like they did on the others. There's also a carrying handle down here. This extends in and out, and I'm going to talk more about that in a little bit. It does have really good plastic feet for bolting it down onto a table. There's four of those all the way around. They are non-adjustable. <clears throat> the tubing appears to be welded pretty well, at least on the one that I have. I'll show you more when I get this upside down and we can see inside. I must say I do like the incrementing on the bevel control here. It's a very fine bevel control, but like I said, even at zero bevel, the blade is not at 90 degrees to the table. Handle is relatively comfortable. I do like this little uh, control for snapping it into place. This really only has two sides to store it in. I, I, I wouldn't store it on the back because of the, uh, the railing on the back, and I'm going to show you the back there in a minute. But it do ha does have two little feet, one on the front and one on the back, so you can store it up on that edge. does have cord management and does have uh, places for storing your wrenches. does not have a place for storing additional blades. And it does have two rollers, two feet or wheels for rolling and uh, I'll discuss that more in a minute after I show you the back. The 4516 does have dust control and a port on the back so it does have a cowling that you can see on this side and then on the other side and if you can see, I'll, sh I'll show this to you upside down you can't see it really well from this angle but there is that gap up there that I talked about earlier and a very simple wing nut for taking this off and, uh, and uh, cleaning it out just a very, very simple wing nut there, and of course, place to plug in your shop vac or whatever dust control you're using. Let's take a look at the exterior as well as the onboard storage for the Bosch. On the left hand side, you have some cord management, and uh, you can see some of the tubing or the framing here on this side, handles uh, on both front and back. I'll show you more about that when I turn it upside down. This is the front panel and the crank came pre-assembled so you didn't have to do any uh, assembling anywhere on the crank. And uh, some more shots of the tubing right there. On the right hand side there's storage for the push stick and behind this knob are your two uh, wrenches for changing out the blade. Down there is the blade guard and I'm going to show you more about that when I turn this around and get it in the light for you. But one of the things I like about the onboard storage for this saw is that the fence can be stored upside down on the right hand uh, right side panel. So when you close this, you have a very tight footprint and everything's stored within the confines of the saw itself. So you can put everything on the saw and take it with you. So let me go around the back side. Let me turn this around and put it in the light so you can see it a little bit better. 
Let's take a look at the rear exterior of the Bosch and the onboard storage. So you can see tucked inside the frame is the blade guard right there at the back of the dust control of the anti-kickback paws. And then you do have the miter gauge right there held into place by two clips. And then you've got two handles in the front and two handles in the back to make it easy to maneuver or move around. You do have a little handle right there for picking it up, although it's 60 pounds, you might want to use two hands. And then it does have hand guards or hand grips on both sides of the saw so you can pick it up with uh, two hands. So that is the exterior of the Bosch. Now let's take a look under the hood. First I want to talk about the cast aluminum tabletop which I showed you from the other side but it appears to have all the webbing um, that needs to be there to keep it rather rigid so it's not going to warp on you even if you put a load on it. This is the railing for the uh, fence control. We'll show you more about that later on. And of course this is how the saw body ties into the tabletop. Over here is the set of gears. If you can see that in this light, I've added a lot of extra light. Hopefully it'll show up for you. There are the gears for controlling up and down and the bevel. Earlier I said I couldn't find where the bevel could be adjusted any better than zero. It was just a little bit less than zero bevel and it appears that there are some Allen wrench controls both on the front and the back. I'll show you that. Well, let's see if we can get it over here. You can see them right there. That may, that may allow you to compensate for the um, lack of a full 90 degrees. Of course, there's your motor. And then this is the cowling that I was talking about. And then down there you can see that gap that I was talking about earlier. So you can see the orange table insert. Uh, this below there. I can't get my hand down in here and hold the camera at the same time. But you can see the gap. I'll see if I can give you another angle on it. Here is the handle for uh, moving this around. I'm going to talk more about that in a minute as well as I'm going to show you more about these wheels. I must say the wheels are hollow. So these are not heavy duty wheels. If you're thinking about this for taking it on the job site, I don't know that these wheels would hold up uh, very well does have an axle that goes all the way across which is going to keep them stable but this, these are not heavy duty wheels. I would see these being used for around your garage and around your home. Down here is the control which allows you to move the extension to the right hand side of the blade and uh, I'm going to talk more about that in a few minutes. Let me see if I can get another angle on this for you from the back side. So here we are on the back side and I think I've got a little bit better light. You can see this cowling. It comes down here. But you see that gap? See that gap in there? You can put your hand in there. That's the gap between the tabletop and the blade. I haven't seen that on the other saws. Uh, that cup that big of a gap on the other saws that I've reviewed. I just don't know what it's going to do. Okay, so that is the gap there. Again, wing nuts here, so you got uh, one, two, three wing nuts to take this off and clean it out. These are the hex head bolts that may, and that's a big question mark because I haven't found it in the manual, may allow you to correct for a blade that will not do a true 90 degrees to the tabletop. It's off by a fraction. It may be nothing more than uh, take backing these out and putting a washer in there. Uh, to shim it up a little bit, but I haven't been able to find it in the manual itself. Another view on the tubing and the welding. All the welds and tubing seem to be very well done. And of course another shot of the table's top from uh, underneath. So that's it for under the hood. Let's take a look under the hood of the uh, Bosch. So there you see the sliding fence control mechanism. This is what will lock it in place. I've also left the fence locked in place upside down so you can see how that looks like from this side. Uh, also I want you to notice the tubing. If I can get in tight there you can see some of the welds. Let's do it from this angle. Very well done. A lot of additional tubing which does make this heavier as I said earlier weighs in at about 60 pounds. 
but what you're going to find with this amount of tubing, it provides a lot of additional strength which will prevent the cage or box or frame or whatever you want to call it from being distorted. This is the onboard storage for the blade guard. Down there is the back side of the storage for your wrenches and of course your push stick. There's a little bit of, you see there's two little um, Allen wrenches down there hooked on to the dust control. This part of the dust control, this one section here comes off by itself, which is really convenient. Then the rest of this comes off with um, um, Phillips screwdriver. Then here is your miter gauge. That's onboard storage. On the back side, I'll show you in a second when I flip this around so you can see it in the light. Uh, I'll show you the um, uh, anti-kickback pause. There's a mechanism that controls the vertical as well as the bevel on the slaw, saw blade. And then there is your motor. So let me turn this around and we'll take a look at the dust control and the uh, anti-kickback pause from the back side. Now let's look at the under the hood from the back on the Bosch. So there are your anti-kickback paws right there. And if you see that panel and those slots, this part of your dust control where you're very likely to have clogs all slides out and all you have to do is take out that little wing nut and you're done. On this side you just need a Phillips head screwdriver and of course there's onboard storage for the Allen wrenches. Another look at storage for the blade guard and then the miter gauge. So that's it for under the hood for the Bosch. This table saw incorporates a feature which I haven't seen on any of the other table saws that I've reviewed so far. It does have integral wheels built into the base along with a nice handle for moving it around. It reminds me an awful lot of the uh, roller board or carry-on luggage that I've been using for years. I currently have this standing up on the bumpers that reside on the left hand side of the tabletop. But one thing that's real nice about this is once you put it up on its edge, put it up on an edge like that, it has a much smaller footprint. So if you're tight for space in your garage like I am, this becomes a very important feature. It also means if you want to roll it around from one position to another in your work area, you're not having to manhandle all 54 and a half pounds. Uh, with the saw. So this is a very, very nice feature to have if you're looking for storage and portability. Again, I wouldn't recommend these wheels for, you know, rolling it around on a rough job site, but boy, for in your garage, in your work area, they're really handy. The Bosch lends itself to being stored on either the left or right hand side. So if you store it on either side, it's going to be resting on these two bumpers right here, plus this little hand bumper right there. If you decide to store it on the side, make sure you have the fence control mechanism flush all the way to the left because you don't want to damage it. You don't want to lay this down on either the front side or the back side because you're going to damage your fence control mechanism. So again, the Bosch can be stored on either the left or right hand side or flat down like you normally would use it. I want to show you uh, some aspects of the fence control mechanism and the uh, increments on here. I'm going to come in nice and close and you can see these increments are very, very easy to read. Uh, even in lower light you're going to be able to see them well. Also I found this shows 24 and just under a quarter inches. And when I measure this out to the right hand side, which I'll show you later on, it measures almost exactly. So this is spot on. There's your increments for your left rip, left uh, from the blade out to the left, and then here's your increments for your right rip. I really like this uh, view here, if I can get that into focus for you. Uh, very, very easy to read these increments. It does flush out to the right hand side, and that's as far as it'll go. So I'm going to get another angle on this and uh, show you how the actual fence control itself works. Let's take a look at the fence control mechanism. First of all, there is a, on the top, is a lever right here that allows you to move this in and out. This is the first time I've seen it on the top. All the other mechanisms I've seen so far either have it located here or actually under this extension itself. 
So when you lift this up, you just slide this out, and it's fairly easy to slide. So if you remember, I think I had the Craftsman or the Ryobi. Uh, they were both a little bit stiff for extending the, um, the extension out to the right-hand side. Once you get it into position, you want to lock it in place. The only criticism I have of this is if you have a workpiece and you, want, and you don't want to move it, you have to move the workpiece out to get to this to change this the position of this extension. All the others do it underneath. But otherwise I like it. It's convenient. You can see it. Uh, very easy to use. Once you have this out here, this is very stable. This is not, this is not wiggling or moving at all. There is zero play up or down or horizontally on this. When I measured this out, from the blade to the fence where it stops is just shy of 24 and a quarter inches. So if you want to rip a piece of uh, 20, uh, 48 by 96 piece of whatever, uh, you can certainly do that with this uh, extension and this bench. I'm going to pull this back up here, bring it in close again. I did find, you know, most of the ones that I see that have this kind of lift up, slide it into position, and lock it down, what I find is you have to be very careful about the alignment of the back. I played with this for quite some time, and when I bring it up to the edge, I don't know if you can see it too very well there, and all I do is lock it down. It stays parallel with that crease, or even the miter gauge slot here. So if you do the same thing here, once I line it up, lock it into place, it's not getting squirrely in the back side, okay? Maybe just a little bit off. But it's a lot better than some of the other controls that I've seen, and this is very, very positive. Of course, you can either set this up here or on the left-hand side of the blade, depending on what kind of rip that you're going to be doing. But in terms of your overall ripping capacity, you get a full 24 plus about... Uh, three eighths, something like that, just under 24 and a quarter inches for your wide rip capacity. Let's take a close look at the fence control mechanism. You can see that the track for the fence control mechanism rides on a plastic track here, so I don't know that I'd want to put an awful lot of weight on this extension on the right hand side. Then here are the increments, they're relatively easy to read, looks like some kind of white metal may perhaps stainless steel and then right there this little increment this little gauge is adjustable as you can see so depending on the blade that you use if you move to a dado stack you might have to adjust that accordingly and then this gauge here for the fence is easy to see through very precise and then of course it's adjustable just like the other one so i want to back i'm going to set up my tripod and give you a view of how this mechanism works Let's take a look at how the fence control mechanism operates on the Bosch. Okay? Right now this is down, this handle's down, it's in the lock position. All you have to do is pull it up, pull this out, and then you have your extension all the way out. If I take, if I take the fence and slide it all the way out, right till it's flush with the edge, and then lock it in place, then what you're looking at is about 18 and a half inches if you include the kerf, and that's with the standard blade that comes with it. This is a little bit tight, so you do have an adjustment on the back side that allow you to uh, change that amount of tension. I would say once you get this aligned so it is either parallel to a miter slot or you've measured it to the blade, I'd pretty much leave this uh, locked in place and then slide the table back and forth until you got to the distance you wanted. That way you're not having to worry about realigning it every time because just like many of the others that lock into place this way and don't use rack and pinion, uh, you're either going to have to do some kind of marking or lock it down after you've got a parallel so it remains parallel to the blade while you move it back and forth. That will save you time in working with the Bosch fence control mechanism. I think when it comes to eye protection and hearing protection, there's an awful lot of people who will naturally put on their eye protection, but they don't think about putting on their hearing protection. So in this, all my videos going forward, I want to start measuring the noise levels of these power tools. So let's take a look at the rigid 
And uh, I'll turn this on and let's see what we come away with. See if I can get that where you can see it. That noise level is right at 100. Okay? So I want you to keep that in mind the next time you're thinking about just using your eye protection. And the reason I say that is if we take a look at this scale, if you look at 100 dB, you're down in the red area. You're, you're starting to sustain, sustain damage to your ears over a period of time. So whether you're working by yourself, you have other people with you, not only should you have your eye protection, but you should have your hearing protection as well. Let's take a look at the noise levels on the Bosch. As you can see, that's 94 decibels, okay? So if we look at this chart right here, 94 decibels is getting into the red. So if you're using this power tool or any other power tool that has that level of noise, you need to make sure you've got good hearing protection. I hope I've been able to provide you with enough insight into the specifications and features of these two table saws to help you to identify the one that best meets your requirements and your budget. I've uploaded a number of other table saw, miter saw, and drill press comparison videos and have placed their links in the description below. If you found this video of value, please press like. If you're not already a subscriber, I would love to have you as a subscriber. And as always, good luck on your projects. If you need to move this, all you have to do is unlock it and yeah, that went real well. That went real smooth. Just slide it into place. One of the features that this saw has that none of the other saws that I've reviewed, none of the other table saws live, the Hini. One of the major, one of the many, one of the major considerations, yeah. One of the major considerations when you're buying a saw is onboard storage.